everyone. So today we are looking at leap code number 146. It's called LRU cache. Um, this is a very infamous problem. You can see that the frequency at which this is asked is very, very high. Amazon 80 times in the last six months, Microsoft 40 times, Facebook 25 times. So this is definitely a data structure that you want to be familiar with because as you can see it is very much frequently asked okay so we're gonna we're gonna um, first of all get really clear on what an LRU cache is and then we can kind of figure out a strategy on how to how to approach this problem okay so our prompt here is design a data structure that follows the constraints of a least recently used cache LRU cache implement the LRU cache class. We're going to have um, a constructor that's going to take in capacity. Okay, and uh, the size will be a positive number. We're going to have a get method that is going to take in a key and it's going to return the value of the key if it exists, otherwise return a minus one. Uh, we'll have a put method that does not return anything but it takes in a key and a value and it updates the value of the key if it exists otherwise it adds the key value pair to the cache if the number of keys exceeds the capacity of this operation we need to evict the least recently used key and then we have a follow-up here is could we do this could we do get and put in uh, constant time complexity okay so let's take a look, let's get clear on what an LRU cache is, okay? So let's say I have, uh, I have a cache, I'm gonna have a, a set it as a capacity of three. Okay, so here we'll set the capacity of our cache to three. And we're gonna have four elements. We're gonna have, uh, let's say one equals A, two equals B, two is gonna to map to B, three is gonna to map to C, and four is gonna to map to D. So the key is one and the value is A, two is the key, B is the value, and so on and so forth. Okay, and so now we're gonna have two methods here. Well, before we get to that, let's just figure out how this cache is gonna work. So let's say I add one a, let's say I add that first element to our cache. Okay, so now we're going to have one as the key, A as our value, and our least recently used element is going to be this one A because it's the only element. It's also going to be our most recently used. Okay, we want to keep track of our least recently used and our most recently used elements. Okay, so now let's say we add another element, uh, two which maps to B. Now, our least recently used element is 1a. That's the least recently used. But our most recently used element is going to be the one we just added. Okay, it's going to be to the rightmost. Okay, now our capacity is still uh, 2, or our capacity is 3, but our size is still 2. So we don't have to do any ejecting at this point. Let's move on. Now we're gonna add this uh, 3C. And now our least recently used is still 1A because it's the first ep uh, element that we added in. And it's the least recently used. 2B is no longer the most recently used. The most recently used is actually the one we just added, which is 3C. Okay. And so now, our data structure is at capacity. We have three elements in our, in our cache. And so now when we try to add this 4D here, we have to eject the least recently used element and then add our new element. Okay, so if we're at capacity, what do we have to do? Well, we have to eject this 1A because we, we can't put in that 4D because the, ca the, the cache is full. So here what we're going to do is we're going to eject this 1A. Okay, 
Let's go ahead and get rid of that 1a. We're going to move the 2b is now going to be the least recently used. So I'll go ahead and move 2b and 3c over. Okay, so this will be 2b, 3c. And now we add our 4d, which is going to be our most recently used, and we are still at a capacity of 3. Okay, so that is, that is the logic that we want to follow if we're dealing with adding elements to the cache, whether we are under capacity or what we do when we go over capacity. So now, what if we want to, what if we want to get an element, right? What if I want to get this 3C? What would have to happen? Well, I would get the 3C, but then 3C would have to move into the most recently used slot, and 4D would have to shift over, okay? So let's say I want to get 3C. If I want to get 3C, then I'm going to have to remove 3C from this position. I'm also going to have to remove 4D from this position. And then 4D is going to shift over. And 3C is now going to be in the most recently used. Okay, 2B is still in the least recently used. And so whenever I get any element, it's automatically going to get removed from that position the other elements have to shift over and then it's added at the end at the most recently used. Okay, so that's the logic we want to follow when we're getting an element. What if we want to set an element? Let's say we want to, we, we don't want to remove an element, we don't want to get an element, and we don't want to add an element, we want to take a current element and change the value. So let's say 4D, I want to change it to 4E. Well, what would have to happen? Well, first we would have to get the element. And when we get the element, we're going to automatically shift everything over. Okay, so if I get 4D, I'm going to remove it from this slot. I'm going to shift everything over. So this 3C is going to shift over. Okay, so this 3C is going to shift over. This 4D will now be in the most recently used. And now I can just change the value here of this D to be the new value, which I can set to E. Okay, so that's the idea behind the LRU cache. We want to check capacity. We want to check if we're, if we're updating a key value or we're adding a new key value. And we want to make sure that we shift everything over and we maintain order. So. A great data structure that solves all of this is using a map. Okay, a map data structure, we can do constant time lookup. It retains order unlike an object or a hash map. We do have guaranteed order. And we have a constant time lookup and um, uh, we know that, that because it retains order, whatever's to the left of the map is going to be our least recently used and whatever's right of the map is going to be our most recently used. Now you can also use a doubly linked list, but I think a map using a map is a much more efficient way and an elegant way of solving this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump over into our code here. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of this and just use uh, ES6 class syntax. I think it's a little bit cleaner. So we'll call this LRU cache. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and have a constructor. And we'll set it with a capacity. And then we can call this dot capacity. It's going to equal capacity. And then we can use a map here. Okay, we can say this dot map is going to be uh, a new map. Okay. And now we're going to have our two methods. We're going to have our get method, which is going to take in a key. And we're going to have our put method, which is going to take a, in a key and a value. OK. So now with the get method, what do we want to do? 
we want to check does the key exist. Okay, if it exists, then what we want to do is get the value and rearrange the, the element that we're getting and put it in the most recently used slot, which is the one at the rightmost. Okay, so it's that essentially what we're going to do is just remove that, delete that element out of the map, and then just add it right back on. Okay, and that'll all be done in constant time. So what, first what we can do is we can check if this.map.has key, okay? Is the element in there? If the element's not in there, according to the prompt, we want to return minus one, okay? If the key exists, if otherwise, return minus one, okay? So if the key's not in there, then we just return minus one. Now, now that we know that the key exists, what do we want to do? Well, first we want to store the value into a variable. Okay, so we can say this.map.get key, that's going to give us the value. And then we want to just delete this, this key value pair from the map. Okay, because that will take it out of the ordering. So if it's in the middle of the map, it takes it out and then we add it right back on, it's going to add it onto the end, the rightmost, which is our most recently used slot. So we can just do a this.map.delete key, and then we're going to add it right back onto the map, this.map.set key and val. Okay, and then we're just going to return our val. Okay, so all we're doing here is let's say we have this, this B and C here, right? Let me just clear this out a little bit so it's a little more cleaner. Let's say I have the, the element B which maps to C. Okay, and I want to get B. So what do I need to do? Well, I need to get the value. I'm going to get the value and store it. So I'm going to get B, okay, from the map, and I'm going to store it. Uh, we're not going to do B. We're going to say two is B. So let me let me just clear that out so it's a little more clear. Two is C, okay. So we're going to get the value C. Then we're going to go ahead and delete this. Delete this out of the map. Okay, and now what we're going to do is this is going to shift over. Okay, so we have 4E. And now we go ahead and add, the key is in the input. Uh, I believe it was 3. The key is in the input already. And so now we just set the new map. We just set uh, 3 to C. And then we return this value, which is C. So the, so the ordering of the map uh, is correct. OK? So that's all we got to do for the get method. Now, for the put method, what do we want to do? Well, first, we want to get the value. We want to check if this.get key is not in there. OK? If it's not in there. What do we want to do? We have to add something to the, uh, to the, well, we don't want to add anything yet. What we want to do is we want to check if it's not in there. If it's not in there, that means we have to add a new element to our map. Okay. But before we can do that, we have to check the size of it. We have to check, uh, are we at capacity? So we can check if this dot capacity equals uh, this dot map dot size. Okay, if we're at capacity, then what, would we, we, what we wanna do is remove the least recently used element, which is the leftmost element, which is the first element if we traverse through it. Okay, so what we wanna do here is just go ahead and create a for loop. Say for let key val of this dot map we're going to iterate over the map like we would do an array or any other thing. And the first element, we just want to delete. 
Okay, so when we when we iterate over a map, it's gonna it's gonna do this in a duple, um, an element, an array with two elements. The first element will be the key. The zeroth index element will be the key. The one index uh, value will be the value. So all we can do, all we need to do here is just uh, delete that. So this dot map dot delete key val at index zero. And then we break out of this. Okay, so now we have removed the re least recently used element if we were at capacity, so we have an extra space. And now we just add this to our to our map. So we just do a this dot map dot set key val. Now you may be thinking that the order might get messed up, but remember, even in this is statement, because we're calling this uh, class method here, this dot get, and we're getting this key, we are going to rearrange everything when we call that get method, even to check if something's in there or not. So even if we're dealing with an element where we're updating it, it will be in the correct order. Okay, because when we call this method right here, even if we're checking a conditional, it will it will call it call this method right here and it will rearrange everything uh, in the correct order. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. And we're good. Yeah. Okay, so that's LRU cache. Let's quickly just look over time and space complexity. We want to see can we get get and put in uh, constant time. And this is happening in constant time. Uh, the map data structure, if we're checking a lookup, that's a constant time operation. Getting an element uh, is a constant time operation. Deleting is also constant time. And setting is constant time. So the get method is all in constant time. And this, even though we're running a for loop, we're breaking out of it after the first element. So that's also a constant time operation. And set is also constant time. So the whole thing is happening in constant time. OK? So that is leak code number 146, LRU cache. It's not too bad when you use a map data structure. And it's definitely one to know because you can see that it is very, very, very frequently asked. Um, and so definitely good to know this one. Okay, hope you enjoyed it and I will see you on the next one.